Hello Library Explorers! My name is Hillary, and this is Dewey. We're your local library explorers, discovering and exploring the world around us through books. If this is your first time exploring with us, welcome. We're so happy to have you. And if you're a returning library explorer, welcome back. Now, before we get started on today's adventure, I wanted to make sure that our new library explorers were ready. So without further ado, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to keep an open mind, open ears, open eyes, and an open heart as I explore, discover, and learn about the world around me. There you go. You are officially a library explorer. Now, let's get going to today's adventure. See you soon. Hello, library explorers. Welcome back to the library. Dewey and I were working on a special project for the kids' room. Can you take a guess at what we were working on? Hmm. Close. It has something to do with winter and it being cold outside. Would you like to take another guess? Oh, that one was closer, but not quite. Are you ready to hear what it is? We're making snowflakes. Would you like to see? Ta-da! We've made several different ones, and none of them are turning out quite the same as we would like them to be. But maybe that's because every snowflake is unique. Have you ever heard that saying? Every snowflake is unique. And you know what? It's true. Every snowflake is unique. Would you like to find out why? Great. Then let's discover it together. So to discover why snowflakes are so unique, it's important to discover how they're actually made. Have you ever looked at a snowflake that's fallen on your jacket or maybe your mitten while you're outside? They create this beautiful six-pointed piece of art. Do you want to know a little secret? Snowflakes are actually not called snowflakes. They're actually what scientists call ice crystals. And what we call snowflakes are actually many, many, many ice crystals that are put together. Ice crystals actually look like this. But an ice crystal's journey to become snowflakes and for us to discover why they're so unique actually starts in the clouds. Follow me. Welcome library explorers to the first part of a snowflake's journey inside the cloud. Inside every cloud is a gas called water vapor. There are other things inside it too, like pollen and dust. When water vapor freezes around a piece of dust or pollen that are floating around in the cloud, it becomes what is called a sea crystal. To become a snow crystal, however, conditions in the cloud must be perfect. The seed crystal must be able to bounce around the cloud and pick up the parts that make up water. Believe it or not, these parts, or better known as particles, that make up water actually form a V-shape. Can you make a V-shape with your hands or legs? Excellent job! Now, let's get back to the library. Welcome back from the clouds. I hope you had fun. Now, if enough of those particles come together, they're able to make a six-sided shape called a hexagon. Looks a little something like this. And if there are more water particles, they can attach to these hexagons and they can give the ice crystals arms. You know what's something really cool? There are actually 30 different names that scientists have given to different types of ice crystals. How cool is that? But there's more to the story than just this. Like the shape of the snowflake is actually depending all on what's going on in the cloud. Such as its temperature, whether it's too hot or too cold or how much water was actually in the air at that time. 
Not as simple as it looks, huh? So, for example, if it's colder in one cloud, those snowflakes might actually be pointier. Or if you're looking at a different cloud and it's warmer and there's less water, those snowflakes might actually be smaller and a little simpler. And that's why scientists think that even though snowflakes look alike, they're actually all different because the temperature in the cloud is always changing, which means so is the shape of the ice crystals. Now, the journey of an ice crystal turning into a snowflake actually isn't over in the cloud. As it falls from the cloud, it's changing even more. Can you believe it? And the reason for that is because all ice crystals go in so many directions, connecting together to make snowflakes. And depending where it is in all these different directions in the air, the temperature, how much, air, uh, how much water there is, and even the air can change its shape. And you know what's really amazing, library explorers? Just like us, every snow crystal is on its own special journey changing every second. It's just so wonderful and cool. Nature makes such amazing things. Now, Dewey and I should be getting back to making our special little art craft over in the kids section. I hope you come and look at it sometime and let us know what you think. Maybe you can bring your own snowflake that you created. Thanks for coming along with us, Library Explorers, as we discovered why snowflakes are so unique and how they're actually made. We hope you learned a lot and that you had fun along the way. Don't we, Dewey? We can't wait to see you on our next adventure and to help us discover more about the world around us. We'll see you next time. Bye.